So next condition is hemobilia. It's very easy to remember. You can see it is hemobilia. So what's happening here? You can see red colored means blood is going where into the bile duct. So blood is going into the bile duct that is hemobilia. Clear? So the most common cause it is iatrogenic trauma during percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography. So see what are the causes of hemobilia? The most common cause it is iatrogenic. So it is going to occur during percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography. Other causes are blunt trauma. It can occur because of gallstones, because of vascular anomalies. What kind of vascular anomalies or pathologies? AV malformations or angiodysplasia. So AV malformations or angiodysplasia, vascular pathologies like AV malformations, arteriovenous malformations or angiodysplasia, Clear? In these cases also, what happens? There can be hemobilia. Commonly, it is because of PTC. Now, see what's the problem. How we are going to perform PTC? You can see here. This is the liver. This is the bile duct. This is the gallbladder. Clear? This is the pancreatic duct and this is the duodenum. You can see these are the intrahepatic bile ducts. You know that PTC is performed blindly. So, during PTC, you injured some minor artery or minor vessel. A minor vessel is injured whenever you were performing PTC because you are inserting the needle blindly. After that, what will happen? This blood vessel with this artery starts bleeding. So, what will happen? The blood will start going where? Into the bile duct and via bile duct, it reaches the duodenum. If little amount of blood is going into duodenum, what happens? There is malina. But if it's massive bleeding, the blood is coming out in the vomitus, so that is hematemesis. So what happens? These patients present to you with GI bleeding. It can be upper GI bleeding like hematemesis. It can be lower GI bleeding like malina. In some patients, the blood is going to clot. And if the blood is going to clot, what will happen? Because of this clot, there is obstruction. And because of this obstruction, there is pain. So clot, colic and jaundice. So what are the manifestations? GI bleeding, clot, colic, jaundice. What is the name of this triad? This is known as Quinque's triad, also known as Sandblom's triad. What are the components of Quinque's triad or Sandblom's triad? So GI hemorrhage, it can be upper GI or lower GI. It can be upper GI hemorrhage or lower GI hemorrhage. If there is upper GI hemorrhage, what happens? Yes, it manifests as hematemesis. Hematemesis. And lower GI, if goes to lower GI, then there is melina. There can be clot colic or jaundice. Question, out of hematemesis, melina, clot colic and jaundice, which one is the most common symptom? So, most common symptom, it is melina. The most common symptom, that is melina. And melina, it is seen in 90% patients. So, this is most common symptom. Most common symptom of hemobilia, that is melina. It is seen in 90% patients. In one of the exam, this question was asked that how much minimum bleeding is required for melina? And it is 40 to 60 ml. So minimum bleeding required for melina. Minimum bleeding which is required for melina, that is 40 to 60 ml. Clear? How we are going to investigate? Since patient is having GI bleeding, so what happens? The first investigation done, it is upper GI endoscopy. And which investigation is diagnostic and therapeutic? We discussed that here. What is the main source of most common source of bleeding in hemobilia? So the most common source of bleeding, it is arterial. What is the source of bleeding? It is arterial. So there is arterial bleeding. Most common source of bleeding, arterial. So that's why. So which investigation is diagnostic and therapeutic? That is angiography. So gold standard is angiography because it is diagnostic and therapeutic. Why? Because bleeding is arterial. So, how we are going to make the diagnosis? Diagnosis, it's easy. First investigation done, that is upper GI endoscopy. The first investigation done, that is upper GI endoscopy. Upper GI endoscopy. Clear? And what is the investigation of choice? The investigation of choice, that is angiography. Investigation of choice for diagnosis. This is angiography and you know angiography is both diagnostic and therapeutic. If you perform embolization, it is therapeutic. So it is diagnostic and therapeutic.
Now, what is the good thing? In majority of cases, one minor artery or minor vessel is responsible for bleeding. So, most of the bleeding stops after conservative management. So, what is sufficient? In majority of cases, conservative management is sufficient. Imagine bleeding is not stopped. In these patients, we go for angiography with embolization. If it is not available or failed, in that case, we go for open surgical ligation. So, see the treatment. So, in majority of patients, what is sufficient? Conservative management.